Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we'll be talking about Python's function. So initially, I was planning to create videos about some other data types such as list, tuple, and dictionary. But I changed my mind and decided to talk about the function prior to getting into those data types so that we can have a bit more complete examples and use cases when we actually get to talk about those before mentioned data types. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is a function in Python? So function can be defined as a group or a container that contains a sequence of Python statements. And usually a function contains a functionality, meaning all the statements in a function usually provide us with a specific functionality. And so in a lot of cases, a function contains some input and output. Input meaning the arguments that you are passing into the function, and output is what the function returns when the function is being executed. Okay, so now let's try to create a simple function here. So the function always starts with a keyword def, which stands for define. And then we're gonna put our function name. So I'm gonna say print something, parenthesis, colon. So this parenthesis is the place where we can actually define all our arguments passing into this function. But for now, we do not have any arguments, so I'm just gonna leave it blank. And once the header portion is ready, then we're gonna type our body portion. So I'm just gonna write print, hello to programming type enter. So what's going to happen if I just try to run this as is? So let's see. And you will not see anything here. So what this means is that this function was not executed, meaning nobody actually called this function. And so that in order for this print statement to work, we have to actually call this function. So let's try to call this function by uh, putting the function name. So print something and then parenthesis. So this parenthesis is important because this means that you want to actually execute this function. So if I run this one more time, you will see hello do programming printed out at the console. So now we have a basic syntax of the function here. I want to clarify the difference between method and a function. So both method and function utilize the exactly same syntax, meaning that it starts with the define, the keyword, and then we have a function name or the method name followed by the parenthesis, and it always ends with a colon. And the only difference between method and function is that method sits within the class and function don't. And I know that we haven't actually talked about the Python class just yet. So I prepared a simple surface level difference. So as you see in the screen, we refer this def highlighted in red as a method because it sits within the class, meaning that it has an ability to alter this class, this object state. On the other hand, we call this def as a function because it's outside of the class so that it cannot actually alter any object state, whether it just operates on it. So as one of the examples, we've talked about the string method in previous videos, and I've called them as method, not as functions, because it sits within the string class. So let me confirm this by typing help string, and if we run this, you will see all these methods that binds to the class string, as you can see. And then if you go down and take a look at the methods here, all the methods here has the self. So this self is actually referring to this class object itself, meaning that all the methods that we see here, we call them as method, not as functions, because they have an ability to actually alter the state of an object created by this class string. On the other hand, in our last video, whenever we are talking about numbers, we also talked about round and absolute function. We call those as functions, not as method, because those sit outside of the class. So let's try to do the same thing there. So help round then let me comment this and if you run this it clearly says that it's a built-in function not a method and this doesn't bind to any class as you can see it just sits by itself so now let's try to talk about the advantages of using function. I'm going to show you some examples where we can see the advantages of a function at base level. So let's say that we have a set of print statement where it prints out some messages about your daily routine. Let's assume that everybody works, exercise, eats, and sleeps. And let's also assume that you want to print this out for five different people. So I prepared some examples here. So the print statement that I've just copied and pasted as an example contains total of 40 lines of code. And we can clearly see that this is not a good way to program because it contains lots of redundancies, as you can see. And every time a new person comes into our program, we are increasing the number of lines of code by 5, which is not practical for a simple operations like this. And this is where function comes in. And obviously we can also use loops or other techniques to handle this situation. But for this example's sake, let's say that we're only gonna use functions. So I will first create a function called print weekly stats. So that print weekly stats, parenthesis, colon, and then print some empty string. 
When we create a function, it's a good practice for us to always put a function comment by using a triple double quotation like this. And the PyCharm will automatically put some metadata information like this. And in here, we can specify what this function will do. So I'm just going to say print weekly stash for different people. And also one thing to keep in mind here is that I'm using the snake case for the function name identical to the variable name that we talked about. So everything here will be lowercase and all the spaces will be replaced by the underscores like this. So now let's try to copy this one set of print statements into the function that we created. So I'm going to copy and paste and then let me also comment this out so that we don't actually see this. So I'm going to call this function print weekly stat and then if I run this you will see the stash in the console for the Brian. But the problem here is that even after we created our function here, we are not really reducing the redundancies because this function is only printing out the stash for Brian, not for other four people. So then if we want to print out the stash for other four people, does that mean that we have to create four more functions with a different print statement? The answer is no, because we haven't actually specified our arguments for the function yet. So then what we need to do here is to make this function take some arguments and pass that argument into the spot into our print statement, like where Brian 36 and 3 so let's try to do that so I'm gonna specify my argument here so the first argument that I'm gonna pass is the first name and then our work our exercise our eating our city. okay so now we have a five different arguments starting from the first name to the hours of work, hours of exercise, and so on. And every argument is separated by the comma separated, and we call this as a required argument, meaning that this function actually do require all these five arguments into the function before it can actually be executed. So now we have all five arguments coming into this function. Our next step is to map this argument into the print statement. So I'm going to be using the string format method that we have covered in the string method video. So let me replace all the spots that needs to be changed with the curly braces. Okay, so now we have a total of five curly braces. Let's try to use the format method. So this is a string class that we have here. I'm going to type dot format and then put the first name here. And upon you actually typing the first name, this first name actually was enabled, meaning that we are actually utilizing the argument first name coming into this function, into this print statement. So let me do the same thing for all other print statements here. Okay, so now we map the all five function argument into the string method that we have using the format method. We're gonna actually print this out five times for five different people. So what we can do here is that I can just simply copy and paste what I have here to save some time. So I'm calling this function five times for five different people with all different stats. So if I were to just run this, you do actually see the exactly same result that you saw whenever you had a 40 lines of a print statement. And you can clearly see the advantages here that we only specify this one set of print statements and we are passing all these arguments dynamically into this function so that we don't actually have to hard code all five lines of print statement every time a new person joins. And let's say that you have one more person that you want to add, you just copy this function and then specify different variable like Eddie and then put different stats here. And then if you print this out, you can actually see that the stash for Eddie came out. So instead of us writing a five more print statements, we just wrote one statement and we use the function that we specified so that we can actually reduce a lot of redundancies that we might have if we were not using the function. So now let's also take a look at another example here. So in this example, let's try to write a function that returns the area of circle. So the formula for getting the area of a circle is like this, pi times r square. So in this case, if we were to create a function that returns the area of the circle, we need to take the radius as our argument because the pi is constant and the square is constant. So let's create a function here that find area of the circle, parenthesis, and we take radius as our argument, colon, and then we're going to specify the function comment. So find the area of the circle. And in the function body, we can specify the pi first, which is our constant. So 3.5. So 3.142. So this pi, I'm not using the snake case. I'm making it all capital because it's a constant. And then let me also create another variable result. Pi times parenthesis radius times radius. So in here, I'm doing the radius square. And then I'm multiplying that to the pi. And let me print this out. So print result. And if you were to call this function. But before we call this, let me uh, comment this so that we don't see the print statement. So let's call this fine area. 
circle and then specify the radius like that 5 and if you run this you will see 78.55 which is the area of the circle if the given radius is 5. So this example is a bit different from above example in that we are not really reducing a lot of lines here by creating a function but by us creating this function here like this we are still providing better readability and portability compared to us just writing this formula in the script here because this function serves a specific purpose which is to find the area of the circle and because we group this functionality into this function we can easily reuse them not only in this script but in another python script. So let me show you a quick example of what I mean by this portability. So let's say that you have a different Python file and you want to actually use the same function that you created here. Then all you have to do is just go to project folder and create another Python file function 2 and from here you can actually import the function that you created in this file into this file. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to do from function dot function. So what I did here is that I'm actually referring to this folder name function and then the second function is the Python file name function import find area of circle and then from this point on you can just call that function so find area of circle with different radius like 7 and if you run this you will see 153.958 which is the area of circle based on the different radius that we have here Okay, so the final topic for this video is the return statement. So far, we have two examples of using the functions and neither of them are returning anything. You might think that they return something because it printed something out into the console, but in fact, it did not. The print statement was just executed within this function so that we can actually see the result into the console, but this function itself is not returning anything because it does not have any return statement. So we call this kind of function as a void function where the function actually does something, but it's not returning anything. So then how can it check that this function is not returning anything? We can simply wrap this function call into the print statement. So if I do print this function. So what I'm doing here is that I want to actually see the result into the console. That's why I'm printing this function call as is. So if I run this, then you do actually see 78.55 which was printed out from this line but you will also see none here because this function is not returning anything and that's what none means meaning that this function does not have any return statement and thus if you actually print out the call for this function you will get none. So then how can you actually make this function return something? All we have to do is just put the return statement at the end. So I'm going to do return result. So what I'm doing here is that this function will actually return the result that we have calculated up here. So if we run this one more time you will see two results, one coming from this print statement and the other one is coming from the return statement here and we are actually seeing the result that this function returned because we are wrapping this function call into the print statement. And one thing to keep in mind about this return statement is that when Python hits the return statement, it will ignore all the codes that's below the return statement. So what that means here is that if I put this return statement right before the print statement like this and run this, you will only see one result coming from this return statement, not from this print statement because this print statement was ignored because the Python's interpreter already found the return statement and function's execution was terminated so that nothing below return statement actually gets executed. So I know that we've been using lots of print statements for all our previous videos because print statement is just an easy way for us to check the result of our program in the console as a visual validation of what we are doing. But when you actually get into the actual programming, you wouldn't be using print statement as frequent as what we have here because the print statement only prints out whatever you've specified inside the print statement into the console and it does not return anything. And so a lot of print statements will be replaced by this return statement in the function and having the print statement in many different places will generate lots of noises and oftentimes those noises will create unnecessary complexities in your development and debugging lifecycle. This doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be stopped using the print statement for our upcoming videos but I just want to bring this up so that you can have a clear distinction between the print versus the return. Okay guys, that's it for this video. We've talked about some of the basic concepts about Python function and we also had a few examples of how to go about creating and using the function. So in our next video, we'll talk more about different types of function arguments, nested functions, local versus global variables, as well as a few more examples of using functions with the arguments that we receive from end users so that we can actually make the examples be more interactive. So if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below and you can find all the content for today's video in the GitHub link down below in the description. And also, if you if you haven't already subscribed please click the subscribe and like button thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in next videos